This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The world was dark. Over Bethlehem, a single special star shone. Unexpected wandering seekers noticed, worshipped the child, and stirred the pot. There was a choice. Do nothing. Try to extinguish the light. Or follow Jesus and shine. Now, I'm not used to reading the end of my sermon at the beginning. Okay, so I'm not used to reading it at all, but I'm not used to reading it at the beginning, but I'm doing this because in case you get lost somewhere in the intervening part of the sermon, you'll at least have that basic message that you can take home with you. This is the Feast of Epiphany. It is a major feast in the church's year, and it is relatively rare that we have it on a Sunday, so most people really never get to to experience it because they, they don't go out um, for the midweek services as much as perhaps they did in another era. But the Feast of the Epiphany, symbolized by the Magi who have traveled from the east to follow the star and to worship at the manger or at the bed of the baby Jesus, is the, the idea that what God did in Christ is now not a secret. It's not just for the family or just for one people or one nation to know, but it symbolizes that it's for everybody. And that's at the heart of what Epiphany is about, is that the manifestation, the revelation of God, the love that God intends for all of creation is no secret, but is revealed and accessible to all. Now, this feast predates Christmas by a lot, and theologically, originally, it was far more important. Now, we've managed to give Christmas its own kind of integrity and everything else, and to some extent we see Epiphany as building on Christmas, but it's the other way around. The feast that we celebrate on the 25th of December really comes from this revelation of the epiphany. That's just how important it is. Now, one of the challenges with this particular, well, there are a variety of angles of this that, based on the way that I usually preach and some of the other preachers around here preach, the idea that these magi were from someplace else, they were outsiders who were coming in were the first to recognize Jesus, that's something to, to build on. The idea that the message is one that is intended for everybody and not for a specialized group, well, that's something that we also repeat quite often. This is also a Sunday, a feast day, on which we talk about the real danger involved. Because Herod wanted to get all of the dirt and all of the news that he could gather and scrape up, not because he wanted to go and worship the child Jesus, the new king of the Jews, but he wanted to forestall any new king as long as he could and would set out to get rid of Jesus if it was in his power. What I would like to focus on today is not any of those things. I would like to focus on one line that is raised up out of the uh, Old Testament reading. And I have to tell you, I heard it in a conversation on Sermon Brainwave. And that is a conversation of four scholars. The one thing that I know is that they all teach at a Lutheran seminary. But because they don't stop and tell you which one's speaking every time, I can't actually tell you which one pointed this out to me. 
but mentioned this line as in the reading from Isaiah, as the people are returning and as people begin to see their sons and daughters returned, the line continues, then you shall see and be radiant. You shall see and be radiant. Now, um, you're going to have to um, permit me a grandfather moment when Sarah oh, and Rebecca, who's in here in the congregation here someplace, and Nola and Eden came to visit after Christmas. Sarah was holding Nola, the two-year-old's hand, and as they came down the, uh, the passageway at the airport here at Palm Springs, and they turned the corner, and Nola looked and saw Susan and I standing there. I, I'm not sure which one was more important, Susan or me, but I'm sure it was me. Um, <laughs> when Nola saw us, her face just lit up, and she began to be so excited because she saw us. And I wouldn't be surprised if our faces didn't light up too. When we looked and saw Nola, when she recognized us, when we recognized her, she was radiant. And I think this points out a very important part about salvation and about what Christmas, Epiphany, and this whole idea of incarnation, the word becoming flesh, is about. The kingdom of God, as a 19th century theologian said, is the kingdom of right relationships. Everything that we really do is about becoming part of that relationship that God is inviting us to get part of and renewing and re refurbishing, repairing the relationships with one another. And so when the people who returned saw the folks that they were looking for, when those relationships were about to be restored, they became radiant. Now, you've seen these kind of things. I mean, you, you weren't there at the airport to see us, but I bet you've had other experiences like that too. Have you ever been in love? And when you looked at your beloved, when they looked at you, and you saw them glow. Have you seen that? Or am I the only one? Okay, so no, okay, good. It's not just me. All right. You see that radiance. Well, here is the idea that in this festival of light, when the light is coming into the world, when the light is revealed to the world, to all who receive that light, to all who establish or reestablish or renew that relationship with the God who sent the light, we become radiant. We actually begin to be a part of that light. It's no longer that light over there that we saw and we got excited about. That light is reflected and it participates and it exudes from us. We're radiant. Now, this is really the work of Epiphany. See, too often we think about all this stuff and we think about Christmas and Epiphany and we come to church and we feel comfortable because these are all our stories. These are the things that many of us have grown up with and it's this time when, when we're doing what Christians do and it's our thing. But the idea of that radiance reminds us that it's not just about how all this came into play so that we might feel warm and fuzzy, but that we might be radiant and be the light to the other folks who haven't yet witnessed it. How we might be partners with God in God's desire to renew relationship with every person on earth. That we might be part of that light. That we might radiate that love and light of God to all the world. We talk about radiating that love out to people who aren't here. To people who are marginalized. To people who've been cut off. But what about radiating that light to the person down the pew who you know has got 
a diagnosis that he or she didn't really want to hear or just lost their loved one? What about radiating that light to the person who's not sure if they're singing on key or not and wondering if you're annoyed by them? There are all sorts of of ways and people to whom that light needs to be shined. And that is our work for Epiphany. The world was dark. Over Bethlehem, a single special star shone. Unexpected wandering seekers noticed worshiped the child, and stirred the pot. There was a choice. Do nothing. Try to extinguish the light. Or follow Jesus and shine.